Hi, I'm about to play a game of Dota 2 without using my hands, instead using my voice and eye tracking. However, I can't really explain it while I'm playing because if I'm using my voice to talk to you, I can't then play the game because I'm using my voice to play the game. So instead, I will hand it over to voiceover Alex to explain this game, which hopefully went well. Otherwise, maybe you'll see a different game to this one. I'm sure we won. Why would we... How would it go wrong? The game... It's going to be a great game. Isn't that right, voiceover Alex? Hey, voiceover Alex here. Um, I can't really confirm if it was great or not, but uh, it was okay. It was okay, and we'll get into that as we go in. Now, the first thing I need to do here is buy items in the shop, but how am I doing that without using my mouse? In order to move my mouse cursor, I use a Toby eye tracker. This is combined with Talon software that uses both where I'm looking on the screen in order to get a rough location of where to be moving the mouse, and then it uses my head movements to fine tune that. And this allows great precision really quickly along the entire screen, which is great. The next thing I then need to do is click, um, but obviously again, not clicking the button. In order to do that, I use noises. To right click in this game, I'm going to be using Z sound. And whenever I do that, it right clicks, and so I can buy my items in the shop. I normally play this game in a party, and that makes this game a lot more fun, I think. So we'll see how it goes solo. And now we are getting into the game. So firstly, right click is also how you move the character in the game. So if I right click anywhere, then I'm moving the character into that location. I then need to move the camera as well, and there is a big map that you need to move the camera across the entire map of. I use two main techniques for this. I can either left click on the mini map in the bottom left corner. In order to do left click, I use a sound. This can be a quite an easy sound to make, and so I use that for a number of different things. Well, left clicking does a lot of different things. The other way of moving the camera is using the cardinal directions. That is, if I say the words up, left, down, or right, that will move the camera in that direction. So if I say down, then obviously the camera is going to move down. I can then combine those if I want to. I can say upright and then move in the upright location. Um, and I can also do big movements. If I say B up, then it's going to move a big amount up. Or if I say B down, then it's going to move a big amount down. Let's just fast forward here as I pick up the bounty rune, and meanwhile my team gives up first blood. Which, um, I'm losing first blood, not the best start to the game, but zzz, I'm sure zzz, it'll only get better. Zzz, drag. It does actually get better from this. And there you can also see the issue of me trying to talk at the same time as playing the game. I can't. I have to interrupt my speech with my weird right clicks of z, and it, uh, it does make communication a bit more difficult. Left, shot, z. S. S. Z. Here I am using some different noises for other actions that are repeated quite often. One of them is s noise. This is a hissing noise like I'm a cat, and it's used for attacking. Um, I think that's just a bit funny to use a, a cat hissing noise as an attack. Um, so if I need to right click anyone, that's going to be a hissing sound. I also want to be using my abilities. So my first ability slot is Sticky Bomb, where I lob out this green explosive. And in order to use that, I use a sound. Another sound that I use during the laning stage is shh. This is pressing the stop key. And I like the idea that I'm shhing my hero you know, telling them to stop doing anything whenever I am using that as my noise. At this point during the laning stage, there isn't too much interesting happening, unfortunately. Uh, there's some harassing, and then there's a little bit of feeding by me, but if we edit past that, then I'm a good player, so let's do that. Let's look at what is almost a solo kill in the mid lane. Here I'm going to kill the Pudge, and to do that I will be using my third skill, that is Blast Off. To do that, I'm going to be pressing E, which is each as a word. Using words as commands rather than noises is a bit slower, but I have limited noises to use. Once I have pressed each, by, well, said each, I will then use 
as a left click to select the location where I will be doing my blast off. Each. This wasn't yeah. technically a solo kill as AA was there, but admittedly did not do too much with their ult at least. Skipping ahead a bit in the game, me and Ricky unfortunately feed, but Ricky luckily has encouraging words for our team to make sure morale stays high. And using my voice commands, I respond to Ricky. Well played. As I think his communication this game really helped us win the game. In terms of communicating with teammates, I have limited options. I have a few defined commands that do allow me to communicate predefined messages, but beyond that, I don't have much at all. One of my favourite messages that I can send, though, is voice. If I ever say voice during the game, it sends a message in chat, in all chat, saying, I'm using voice controls. I just love sending this. If I fuck up, I can send this and be like, okay guys, you know, it might look like I'm a bad player, but it's just because I'm using voice controls. And if I play really well, then I can send it and be like, you're losing to me, I'm using voice controls, like, come on now. It also confuses people, because like, surely I'm not actually using voice controls, but no, I'm playing the game using voice controls, which is a bit wild. Getting back to the game, I have now got my ultimate, which means I've got the new button press to do, well, not actual button press. For my ultimate, I am using a ooh sound. This can admittedly make me sound a bit like a monkey when I am using them in quick succession, as you often have to do on techies. Um, speaking of monkey, let's kill this monkey in the lane now. Ooh. Tss. Ooh. Tss. Z. Z. Jumping ahead, it seems like my team is taking a good engagement here despite the deficit that we are in, and so I TP to try to push the advantage. Um, to TP, I simply say the word TP and then left click using. At this point, we want to try to get some more kills, but this uh, Wukong command is kind of killing my team. I've also already missed some other spells, so it's not great here but we are able to at least get on this squirrel and kill the squirrel. At this point, I think it's a good time to try to kill this monkey, as we are in a decent position here. The problem is that it is difficult for me to look at my minimap and work out that I am completely alone here. I try to at least alone kill this monkey, and it is so close, and it's hit, and it's so close, and then he just heals up to full, and by my going in, I sort of bait in my team to going in and due to this R Ricky also dies, although he does get to kill the AM. But yeah, in terms of not being able to look at the minimap, that's pretty difficult because of the fact that I can't look at somewhere I'm not clicking. Wait, no, wrong way around. I can't click at somewhere I'm not looking. Because of this, it's not as easy for me to quickly glance at the minimap while I'm doing something else, as I have to pay attention to whatever I'm doing. This obviously doesn't mean it's impossible to not look at the minimap, but it is one of those things that is more difficult due to the way that I play the game. After respawning, I see a CM that is simply not allowed to be remaining alive, and so that's a quick kill for myself. Oh, oh, down, oh, up, dot, z, down. Jumping ahead a bit, I then decide to gank the tower, and using some high skill techies gameplay, I'm able to secure the kill. Outstanding move. Now while I was performing this outstanding gameplay, Ricky did die, but luckily he had some game plan ideas in terms of how to turn this game around. This involved taking a fight without him, and uh, we did pretty well there. Oh, managed to get a pretty nice stun off on three heroes and decent damage and then tanked enough that my team was able to clean up. Z. Z. Down. Z. Z. Down. Voice. Z. And I get myself a well-deserved, I think, Z. voice. At this point, you would think, considering we're three heroes in the bot lane and we just managed to kill three of them, it would be the perfect time to push bot and take the T1 tower. But Slot uh, has other ideas, which will be maybe a running theme this game, um, but we, we work with the teammates that we are given. AA and I then try to push the tower together, but it doesn't work out the best for us as they do respawn.
Luckily, I managed to just escape that situation while my mid dies instead, which definitely is value for the team. After taking some deserved mid farm, I then go on a little warding adventure. Of course, nothing will go wrong with this. It's not like me going warding will lead to three of our team dying, and then also separately somewhere else on the map, two of our team dying. So leading to a full team wipe. I mean, it's just warding. It can't go that wrong, can it? So that wasn't too good, and the game is definitely going to be a bit harder for us now. Luckily our Ricky continues to be an upstanding member of this community. Shortly after everyone respawns, we take a pretty good fight thanks to an amazing AA blast by our, well, AA. We did have to sacrifice our Witch Doctor in the process, but hopefully this means we can take a better fight. Now this fight is still not easy for us as we're quite the, the deficit. But I managed to go in, stun one of them, disarm, and just get the heal off in time and the damage. It's unfortunate that we didn't manage to get the AM here, but managing to clean up three, considering the disadvantage that we are in, is definitely good for us. As my team doesn't seem to be as enthusiastic as me as pushing towers and, you know, playing the objective, I decide to do that myself and eventually take the bottom tower, although doing it a bit safely as I am aware that they are respawning. My team manages to take a good engagement without me mid, and so I continue pushing and farming up a absolute storm in this game. But before too long there is an engagement mid as our Witch Doctor gets gone on. Witch Doctor luckily uses the sheer power of balance to survive long enough for us to turn the engagement. There is a CM next to me that I want to stun. I get stunned before I can stun the CM to stop the thing, but I managed to do that pretty quickly. And then avoid the party ring here that which the Monkey King so enjoys. And we managed to kite out the Monkey King to also secure that kill as well. A Dota low rank miracle then occurs as we decide to push the lane after taking a good team fight, which is quite amazing, I have to say. We are able to take the tower safely and then back, but then skipping ahead a bit, I see an engagement mid that I want to join. Now normally, if you see an engagement where your mid and offlaner has died, and it's just the two supports that are around, you run away pretty quickly. But you don't run away as quickly if you have a techies that is as farmed and tanky as it was at this point in the game, and a witch doctor that rushed Ags and just picked it up. Which means we managed to absolutely clean up this fight without our calls, which are really not needed at this point. This would be the point actually when our calls would be useful, as they would help us to take the towers. But everyone just runs away, and I'm just pushing mid alone, so I end up deciding to go top, as that seems to be an easier tower for me to take on my own. But we could have definitely pricked our advantage more here. Jumping ahead in the game, I start setting up for Roche, and I see enemies also coming. At this point, it would be great to communicate to my team and say, hey, come here quickly, we really want to take this fight. As I don't have a command to do that, I really should make one thinking about it as it's pretty important communication. Despite that, this fight seems to be going pretty well. We've managed to kill their carry in one of the supports as a trade for myself. We do here just kill our true carry, the Witch Doctor, but we should be able to clean up this fight. Oh wait, Slark, what are you, what are you doing? Okay, Slark just dies. Ricky's also gated out of here. So yeah, this fight could have gone a lot better. This is a little messy, and it would have been nice to take this Roche. But we didn't lose the most, I guess, as they don't take the Roshan. Jumping ahead in the game, we take a bit of a weird fight, as our AA is respawning and currently in base, and our rookie just immediately dies. Our Witch Doctor is using their ult, but is currently in the Monkey King party ring, and so has to walk away. And I just dodged a hook here, which is pretty cool, and we go in, but it is just me, Slark, and the Witch Doctor, who is pretty low and dies. I blast off into the fight, and thanks to the AA blast, we do manage to kill the squirrel, but it is pretty rough in this fight. I'm trying to run away from this Monkey King, but I cannot run away fast enough, and I do die, but I do distract the Monkey King long enough, at least, for Slark to clean up. And we do manage to take a full team wipe, which is pretty cool, but it is difficult for us to push our advantage. Our waves are not pushed up much, and Slark does manage to push the T2, but without the rest of the team there, it is more difficult. At this point I want to prepare for taking Roshan top which will be the next objective for us to really go for. I recently got level 25 in this game and I'm not really sure which talents I should go for. 
This does definitely waste some time, as it would be better to just commit to one of them. One of the things with voice controls is it can be a bit mentally taxing doing all the voice control stuff, and so some of the big macro gameplay can fall to the wayside. We do manage to take the Roche, and then we move on to try to find a fight. This fight does start with our Witch Doctor getting hooked, which is not the great start for us, as Witch Doctor is sort of our secret for this game. But we are able to trade and get Pudge and get the CM, which should be pretty good for us, and maybe we're able to then push the advantage. But no, we're not able to push the advantage. Our waves aren't in the best place, and so Ricky decides to TP home to try to push one of them out, which I don't think was really the best idea. But the bigger problem was that I didn't realise that Ricky was here, and I thought we had an advantage in numbers, but no, it was the three of them versus the three of us, and their three was stronger than our three in this particular situation. And so that led to the three of us dying and losing the Aegis just after picking it up, which was not great for the overall progression in this game. And here you can see your team's cores in their natural home. But skipping forwards in the game, there is an engagement again in this place, and again we have a pretty good Witch Doctor Ultimate, so it looks like it's going pretty well for us at least this time around. I'm walking up and our Slark is going in, and our Slark is dying? Oh, our Slark is dead. Okay, maybe this isn't going quite as well for us as we would have liked it to. I don't get invited to parties, so I naturally stay inside the party room, but maybe I should have committed there and helped out my AA. At this point I go in on this AM, which is a slightly stupid thing to do at this point. We do get the AM low, but I did not take the damage talent, and as I really maybe should have done, and I slowly die to the combination of the Woodwing and the AM. Luckily they're also not able to take many objectives off of their team fight win here and it isn't too long until the entire team is up and there starts to be an engagement middle. The CM dies before I get to the fight and then my Slark dies also before I get to the fight, but that's partly to be expected of course. I start walking over and the AA gets this very nice Ice Blast and the Witch Doctor starts piling in the damage. This means that we get to finish off the Hoodwink and the Pudge on our list the target is the Monkey King and I make excuses as to why I can't go to his party ring right now. We managed to kill off the monkey and now it is just the AM and we managed to take them down as well. It's a full team wipe and it's time for us to finally push an advantage. And there's no way with this advantage we can mess it up. So let's see as we start pushing down mid lane. We are pushing the five of us, actually four of us, as we did lose the Witch Doctor in that fight, which is unfortunate as Witch Doctor, as I have discussed previously, is probably better than some of my carries at this point. At this point I should really heal my team up using my Guardian Greaves, but I don't do that, which is not great, but not the biggest issue in the world. But we are pushing this and it seems to be great, and then all oh, my Ricky blinks in on low elf. I mean, I'm sure he's got this, what could go wrong? Let me just put down some wards over here, as I didn't really actually realise that we're fighting at this moment or in the game. And oh, my uh, Ricky's dead. I mean, see him is also dead without buyback, but that's not really the trade that we wanted when you're giving up one of your cores. But, you know, this will be fine. There's still three of us versus one of them. Let We can push this, maybe get another tower. But, uh, hmm, our AA is keeping away. That's uh, not great. And oh, now a Pudge is respawning and I am very scared about being hooked. And so yeah, we only end up taking one lane of barracks here, which definitely could have been a lot better. Part of that is also that I haven't got all the items to start doing the right click damage that I am transitioning into. But over the next few minutes, I farm up enough money to get those right click items and also have my back during this time, they managed to take the Roche, and we knew that, and so we took the bottom T2 tower. We ended up staying around bot, and then we got in a fight bot, which, uh, I mean, it started out okay, but it didn't really end up okay. Our Witch Doctor ult gets used there, but is cancelled pretty quickly, which is actually pretty key to a lot of our team fights, getting a good Witch Doctor ult off. And so this fight starts going downhill pretty quickly after that, as we didn't have the best positioning going into this fight either. I also myself spent a lot of time right clicking on a Pudge which really didn't help our team fight at all. And so they quickly end up pushing down the lanes and I buy back early knowing they're going to be here soon so that I can start setting up mines. 
our AA is the only other hero that has buyback at this time, and AA shortly buyback as well as we start to chip down these heroes. But this is going to be a difficult fight when it's four of them and just two of us. Our AA steps up a bit and does get stunned, which leads the AM to go in. And there is an AM on AA action, and surprisingly AA can hold their own against the AM, which forces the AM to blink away. But our AA is getting low, and I tried to come in and help against this Monkey King, but it is not quite enough. I do manage to take down the Monkey King, but I go down in the process as well. This is us dead without buyback, which is not great. Our team is going to be respawning soon, but then it's going to be a 3 versus 4, which is not going to be good either. Uh, the enemy team does back off for a bit as our team respawns so that they can heal up and get some more resources. But it's not too long until they're trying to take our last barracks and I'm just watching not able to do anything, which doesn't feel great. And it definitely feels especially worse when you watch your slot um, just dying with, uh, with, with nothing gained out of it. With, right, you know, that doesn't, that doesn't feel great. It isn't a good feeling in my, in my chest. In my chest, it doesn't feel too good and then just watching them take our last barracks. And that means it is mega creeps for the enemies and they are going to try to also push this harder as we don't have slot for 90 seconds without buyback. Our AA and myself are now respawned, but it is going to be a difficult fight without our full team. The engagement starts going on the squirrel with our rookie and also our death ward, which is a big usage of our death ward. So hopefully we get enough out of this. I then come in, start right clicking and throwing down my spells, and we're able to chew through some of their team. Monkey King is still coming in though. Monkey King is a bit late here into this fight, which definitely gave us a big advantage. But he is still a scary character to go against. Rookie does die, but finds back quickly, so we can finish off this monkey and team wipe for them, which is great. Our lanes are not in the best positions, and we do now have to face against Mega Creeps, but there is a chance that we can still win this game, and I am playing for that chance. After sorting out the waves in our base and buying my items, I start pushing down mid, hoping that there's a chance we can just end it there and win this game finally. Unfortunately, it is just me and my Ricky that is able to come, and then Ricky decides to start hitting the towers when they firstly had backdoor, and secondly just tanking all of the damage himself, and now he's on half health, which is going to make this a lot more difficult. And then the squirrel respawns, and this feels a lot more awkward. We decide to back as the rest of the team is respawning, and my focus goes on the most important thing at this time of the game, which is obviously tier 5 items. I start pushing out the jungle where I know it's safe to start farming these items, but I forget that the entire enemy team has now respawned and are obviously going to be trying to do something. I'm a little slow, I'm a little late, as I'm considering what tier 5 item do I want to pick up, and then I just die. Which is really not good for the team. <laughs> uh, me dying here without buyback is a big throw. It was still going to be a difficult game if I was alive, but it's basically an impossible one with me dead. Without me alive, they are easily able to push into our base, take the Ancient, and take the game. Right. <sighs> well, we lost, but I think I did pretty good. So maybe I'll, maybe I'll show this game. I didn't play perfectly, for sure. Um, some of that is because, you know, I'm not the best player in the world. Some of that is going to be because I'm playing voice. You know, it's, it's going to be a mix of both. But I think I did pretty well. I think I did pretty well. Um, GG. Um, yeah, I, ha I have a command also to do that. But yeah. I'm going to report this guy. But yeah, let's just look at the stats. Most GPM almost on my team, apart from the AA. The AA and the AA was mid. But I was a position four. Um, almost most hero damage. Yeah, I guess it was... There's two supports at the second. <laughs> Damn, our, our carries were not the best in this game. There were multiple times when we could have pushed and we just didn't. We just like TP'd home. That was sort of a general team issue. Yeah, almost most tower damage. Wait, the CM went heart. I love that for her. Um, and a pirate hat. What a CM, what a CM. Top 10 CMs. Um, I sort of threw at the end there. I really shouldn't have been up in that position, but... Yeah, I was getting distracted by the idea of T5 items. But thanks everyone for watching, I really appreciate it. If you want to support this channel specifically, there's all the buttons you can press down below, as well as Patreon, Ko-fi, and the YouTube join, which I hopefully have set up now.
Additionally, there's also the game I made with Stardust Collective called Ziggy's Cosmic Adventures. Buying that and reviewing that would help me tremendously. If people are interested in more videos like this, do let me know. This video is a bit weird because it's sort of split between half just talking about the voice controls and half commentary over a low rank game of Dota 2. And I'm not really sure if I was going to do it again, how I would do it, so let me know what you thought of it. I could do commentaries over more of my games, I can talk about playing other games with voice controls, or I could further explore the different options for doing voice controls in Dota. I was also considering streaming this, but it wouldn't be very interactive, it would be very difficult to read chat at the same time as, you know, playing the game. If I look at chat, I can't move my mouse, and if I talk to chat, I can't click on anything. So that would be difficult, but if people were very interested, I would consider it. My next video is probably going to be more Ziggy related, so Ziggy fans do look out for that. Thanks again everyone for watching, I really appreciate it, and I'll hope to see you next time.